I always wanted to do a Northern Territorial posting. Resist, keep your hands behind your back, okay? Get on your knees. Ah. You upset? Ah. We were told that to come up here, you have to be a bit more of a stronger cadet. I'm gonna arrest you for being drunk in public, okay? For having a bad day. We all recognize the challenges up here. It's a very unique territory, very beautiful as well. There's nothing I'd rather be doing. If I could do this day in, day out, I'd do it every single day. I'd love it. Jimmy Akabak, Pinga Sulik, Tamani, Palisime Ujunga, Atata Chialo, Tatagalo, Palisime Osimayuk, who were an octopalis Luni, who were in the Kalor Luni, Tungasivici, Halunu. Born and raised in Nunavut territory, a northerner through and through, third generation RCMP member, Jimmy was made to serve the North. I'm Inuit, uh, I speak the language, I'm a crisis negotiator. Um, I'm a guide, uh, interpreter. I take a lot of members out on the land, uh, skidooing or day trips. Basically, a northerner, a northerner doing the job within the RCMP. Knowing the language can have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, advantages that you communicate with everybody or even the elders, complainants. People tend to talk to you more or give you information because most times Inuit, I find when they're upset or when they're under stress, they want to speak their mother tongue. Jimmy has lived and worked in the North for over 20 years. The RCMP have been there for over 120. They share a complex history with the Inuit people they serve, a history defined by cultural differences and common bonds. <laughs> which is people working with the RCMP. That's an old traditional name from way back when Inuit family would look after RCMP members that came north and help feed them, clothe them, keep them freezing, basically. One of the highest ranking Inuit RCMP officers in Canada, Jimmy works in Nunavut's V Division, along with 138 RCMP members, serving the capital of Iqaluit and all of the isolated hamlets across the territory. 1.9 million square kilometers of barren, hostile tundra. The commanding officer in charge, Marty Cheliak. Northern policing is basically remote policing. Uh, it's certainly different from down south. We have communities that stretch uh, from north of Quebec City to north of Edmonton, almost to the British Columbia border. We have a multifunctional role up here. It's really, uh, it's, it's quite unique and challenging in that respect too, because uh, we are the social worker, we are the taxi driver, we're sometimes the ambulance driver, and sometimes we're the health nurse. The RCMP in the territory is the one agency that anybody can call 24-7 and we are there. We will respond to, to any situation. Responding 24-7 can mean flying across the territory at a moment's notice. We have one Pilatus P-12 uh, aircraft. We have two pilots and one flight engineer. We generally fly about 30 of 31 days out of the month. In 2007, Constable Douglas Allen Scott was shot when he responded to a call in the hamlet of Kimmerut, Nunavut. RCMP Air Services had an emergency response team in the air and on their way to the scene within minutes. The civilian members who fly for air services are among the best in the country. They know that in the north, you have to expect the unexpected. The uh, conditions up here are pretty harsh. We'll see beautiful uh, spring days. Uh, the first hour of the flight, then we'll be passing over areas of, of blizzard conditions and then ending up at, you know, 
on the other side of that uh, back in uh, beautiful weather. There are no real standard conditions other than extreme. It's the extremes of Nunavut that make communication imperative to RCMP operations up north. The telecoms unit here, the operational communication center, is a lifeline for every member in all 25 communities, 24-7. Okay, Pearson, go ahead. Do you want me to keep you on until you're 78? We check on our members every 60 to 90 minutes. If they're on a call, we check on them every three minutes. Anything can happen in three minutes. Telecoms and air services can be the difference between life or death for the RCMP members heading out on the front lines of Canada's far north. From the Baffin region to the Katikmiut communities, the RCMP are Nunavut's first responders. Many have lived there for years, but most are junior members in their first posting with the force. The busy detachment in Iqaluit is an ideal training ground for these RCMP rookies. My first day here, we had over 15 arrests, just me and my partner over 20 calls, dealing with different things, and that's all in a 10-hour shift. Like, we didn't get to sit down for probably five hours. We're on the road so much. Kip, what's he wanted for? Dealing. 10-4. Constable Brent Moorkey is in the field coaching program in Iqaluit. He's from Regina, Saskatchewan, and he's been in the RCMP for just under six months. Okay, okay. come on. Okay. What did I say? Keep your hand behind your back. That's what I'm doing. Settle down. You can sing in Navi. You're dealing with stuff that you don't think you'd ever deal with. I think uh, we're told that to come up here, you have to be a bit more of a stronger cadet, stronger person, because you, you are more alone. You have to be more independent. You don't always have that time for backup. Constable Tyler Smith from Cremona, Alberta, has served in the North for just over two years. I always wanted to do a Northern, uh, northern posting, a territorial posting, and uh, when it came up when I was in training, that, uh, that there was an opportunity to go up north. I was eager to take uh, take the opportunity on coming up here. You know, I joined the RCMP to see the country, and uh, I'm definitely seeing that so far. Crime has been on the rise in Nunavut for the past five years. 2007 saw 10 murders, 40 suicides, and 19 armed standoffs in a population of just 30,000. I'd say up to 85 to 90 90 percent of the calls we get is uh, alcohol related how much have you had to drink tonight or after the fact we get investigations on assault or sexual assault disputes family disputes it is busy did anybody hit you no we'll get somebody that can okay. talk to you okay? okay not every call is about picking up the pieces ma'am come to the front of the car some are about making sure things don't fall apart Maybe letting someone sleep it off instead of going home where families can be impacted. Two one-way road. Clarkways, there's two males fighting outside of that residence. He did not see any weapons. I'm sure if there is not. But other nights, trouble can come from any direction. Don't resist. Keep your hands behind your back, okay? Boys, we got the suspect here. On this night, police surround a man suspected of assault as he tries to flee the scene. Get on your knees. Put your hands behind your head, okay? Lay on your stomach. Get on the ground. Get down. Get on the ground. Get your back. You have to think fast, and you have to be very tactical in your thinking. It just comes down to basically public safety, and there has to be people that, uh, that are willing to, to do things and put themselves in harm's way to basically protect society. Okay, I'm arresting you for break and enter and assault, okay? You have the right to retain and instruct counsel in private without delay. There's a 24-hour legal aid number available. The lawyer can explain the legal aid plan to you. Do you understand? 
When extreme danger erupts in the north, an elite group of tactical officers known as the Emergency Response Team is called into action. The situation is at uh, 10 o'clock this morning. There was an incident in uh, Apex in Akalawa. An individual known to police has uh, shot his uh, common law and uh, he was in possession of a 308 rifle. Certainly the North is uh, challenging uh, as we're working. The cold is always a factor here when we're uh, dealing with calls out on the land. We learn how to adapt to that, how our equipment's gonna respond and, and ways to, uh, to work around the cold. There's a high degree of gun ownership uh, through the north, and the majority of our calls are involving uh, complaints with shots fired and, and uh, firearms involved. Okay, don't let your guard down. You may have friends with them. Make sure you have good cover. Lift up! Drop the gun! Put the gun down! Take that step toward us! Stop! Kneel down to the ground! Get down on your belly! Adam, you're under arrest for murder right now, Adam. Okay? Tactical specialists, rookie patrolmen, specialized support units. <laughs> All RCMP members on the front lines in Iqaluit, all dealing with the same challenges police in southern cities face, with an added icy layer. But what truly sets northern policing apart is the service the RCMP provides to the 25 remote posts spread across Nunavut. We have 25 communities in the north, all isolated, all fly-in posts. We have 15 two-member posts in Nunavut, and it's very remote. The countryside is uh, no trees, of course, uh, very cold, and certainly very cold in the winter. All right, Ben, give me that back. This is what's called a uh, summons ticket. After six months in Iqaluit, Constable Brent Morkey was posted to the small remote community of Baker Lake. Population 1800. I remember getting off the plane, it was cold. Um, that's, it was coming from a Callowit, uh, you don't have the wind, and it's a cold here that digs right through you. Brent's new partner is Constable Michael Simpson, a 10 year veteran of the North. First time meeting Mike was uh, interesting. Right away, it was just welcome, come on over, have supper, you know, meet the family. This is our family, welcome to it, you're now part of it. It's interesting, it's uh, much more visible, I found. You're like a fish in a very little bowl, and uh, everyone knows who you are. Both communities I've been, just been a couple of us. I think I get to, work-wise, um, I think I get to do a lot more than other people. Like, uh, I tend to get to follow a file from, right from the beginning, right to the end. You get to actually know the people a little bit more now. Uh, you go to college, you actually know who they are. You've spoken with them, you might have played hockey with their kids, and, uh, yeah, you just seem to know everyone and uh, you do your best to help the family out instead of uh, getting in there and get the job done, get out and hurry up to the next call. How's the weather out there? Uh, cold. Getting colder. That extreme cold is at the root of V Division's biggest challenge, manpower. They're short a dozen full-time members and a small eight-man relief unit tries to meet the demands of the entire territory. The challenge up here for the last uh, two years has been that every 30 days, I had members flying in and out of communities. With demand almost impossible to meet, the relief unit has to bring in members from all across Canada to fill in. It's frustrating at times. It's uh, nerve wracking to make sure that members are not left alone. Remote members like Brent and Michael are on call 24-7. If extreme danger arises, backup is hours away. 
in a crisis situation, it takes us a long time to get to, from one area to another. If we have to mobilize our emergency response team or a major crimes unit uh, to attend Cambridge Bay or Kogluktuk on our west side, it, it can take us up to eight, ten hours at times. Those hours can seem like days in the midst of a hostile situation. And it's not just the members who feel it. Michael's wife, Susan, has done her share of police work when no one else could. I always say that I should get paid overtime because I'm up at night as well. And uh, it does happen that I know what's going on sometimes, which I would prefer not to, and I do worry. One night, a man armed with a gun threatened Michael and his partner. A standoff ensued at the man's home. So I was kind of worried about Susan, so I got her to her back to the office. So she heard a lot of the call just because uh, the radio was going. I was talking to dispatch on his radio in the office. The police officers couldn't leave the scene. Backup was flying in. That night, Susan became a part of the team, the only one who could escort the backup into town. This is the nature of policing in the far north. When we arrived to Iqaluit in 1999, uh, we were into an adventure. I had lived outside of Toronto my whole life and we were just very excited to try something different and we definitely got a different experience. I think the uniqueness is it is everybody knows who you are and you know who everybody else is. And you all have to live with each other and you see everybody wherever you go, whether it's to the northern store, gas station, or to the school. You want to get to know these people because uh, it's such a community, you want to be part of it. The people have been wonderful. I've had great experiences with people here. Uh, very gracious, welcoming people, interested in telling us about their life. You know, the Inuit have a very distinct culture up here, and they're very uh, traditional and spiritual and culturally uh, attuned. We have a good um, relationship that's built on a tradition uh, that was really established through the special constables as interpreters, as guides, as uh, looking out for the RCMP. We would have never survived up here without the Inuit. The unique relationship between RCMP and Inuit has led to new ways of policing evolving in the north. <laughs> That's the red one. What's the other color? Blue. A community-based approach is just the beginning. We almost demanded of our employees that, that we want them to be uh, uh, culturally compatible with the communities that they serve in. We want them to get out and explore and to really treat this as an adventure. You know, to, uh, to live in the culture, to understand and to uh, get involved in the community. Every day you learn something new, especially with the job we have, you learn different ways of talking to people, and you get to experience different things. Snow machining, going to find someone, uh, search and rescue, there's all sorts of different things you can learn. Hunting, fishing, uh, speaking with the elders, speaking with the kids, just everything is just an amazing experience. Nunavut stands apart, a unique and vibrant place to live, a challenging and demanding place to work. And for the RCMP members who choose it as their home, Nunavut is their reward. Eighty-seven percent of the people in Nunavut speak Inuktitut uh, as, a, as their mother tongue language, as their first language. So uh, we need to be able to respond and in kind. And we're going down that road with, uh, with the special constables. Welcome to the engagement ceremony of our two new special constables. The newest members of the RCMP receive their badges. Part of a new Northern Provo unit, they will escort prisoners across the territory. This young woman and this young man represent the foundation for what is to become the future for Nunavut and responding to the needs of our communities. They are made in Nunavut for Nunavut. I think that we provide a superior police service to the territory uh, based on uh, a number of factors, but really with the challenges that we face and the, the junior membership that we have, even with coupled with all of those challenges, we do provide a great service to the, to the communities in Nunavut. CO Marty Cheliak's northern tenure is almost at an end. For those who stay, the challenges continue. The extremes rage on. 
but it's the wonders of Nunavut that will forever be a part of the RCMP's continued service in Canada's far north. Every morning you get up and uh, yeah, some, something new is going to come up or something different every day. We're all just one great big family. And new guys coming up, you, you never really experienced it. You kind of heard about the, the RCMP family, but you really feel it when you get up here. It's been um, frightening, it's been exhilarating, it's been unique, it's been interesting, eye-opening, and uh, for me it's been really life-changing. So it's, it's been terrific, really. Good and bad, but mostly good, and I wouldn't change it for anything or go back and not do it. How many people can say they've been up in the Northern Arctic? How many people can say they've been up in the Arctic Ocean, go on exploring all the way up in the tundra? And I'm just going to add to those experiences wherever I go. It's been a wonderful experience. Uh, I leave behind a number of great friends. And I think what I'll miss most is the people, you know, the people uh, that uh, really make our jobs easier and make our jobs more exciting and uh, rewarding. <laughs>